Hi, this is Hutch with BankingTruths.com, and today we're going to talk about whole life's guarantee growth, which is probably one of the most uh, attractive aspects of a whole life policy, especially to newcomers, and probably one of the most misunderstood elements of a whole life policy as well. Uh, I wrote this very extensive article on whole life's guarantee growth and four ways to accelerate it. You can get the link right below right now. And uh, I'm going to show one schematic on there, and it has to do with what I say right here. So probably the coolest thing about whole life's guarantee growth is whatever the base policy death benefit is, your cash value, excuse me, your cash value has to equal the death benefit uh, as soon as you die or whether you reach age 120, whichever comes first. Now, most of you are not gonna make it to 120. Some of your kids will. But the important thing is, if we look at the guaranteed tra trajectory that all of these policies have, it's a contract, it's in the policy, that if you pay these premiums, you can see the cash value in blue here approaches the top end of the basic death benefit and actually equals it way out here at age 120. Now notice that at life expectancy here, somewhere in this area, you've actually gotten the bulk of your guaranteed growth. So that's very, very appealing because I know most of you are concerned about whole life, not so much for the guaranteed death benefit, but because of the cash value and using that for retirement or having that safely on hand for liquidity or whatever that is. But just knowing that at the very worst case scenario, if no dividends are ever paid, if dividend rates don't go back up, it doesn't rely on any of that. The basic cash value has to equal the death benefit. Now, this is especially appealing when you consider that paid up additions, hopefully you've read about paid up additions. If not, you can check out this article below at slash PUA. When you buy paid up additions, either through dividend payments, like you roll your dividends back into the policy, or you make extra PUA payments over and above the base premium, which most of you are doing by adding term riders, when you buy these paid up additions, not only does it increase your base cash value, but I just took this little schematic and I stacked the extra death benefit on top. And that's actually what happens. You can read about this here at our PUA article, but think about it. Since your basic cash value has to equal the death benefit, if you raise the amount of the death benefit, well then, aren't you also raising the tra trajectory of your cash value growth? And that's what I show here. This is not a scale model. Don't hold me to this, but you get the point. Uh, so I want to actually look at some uh, carriers. Th they all design how their guaranteed growth works and how much of the total return is dependent on dividends. And I think this is where the biggest myth comes in. And I think some of you need to be cognizant of it when you're looking at illustrations. Not that you know, you're ever going to have to worry about just getting the guaranteed cash value because all these companies, well, not all of them, but most of them have paid a dividend each and every year for the last 100 plus years. Some of them, like the ones we use, 150, 160 plus years. Um, but the reason is you want to see how efficient the guaranteed structure is. So if we look at the guaranteed cash value in all these examples we're looking at, we just show the initial premium of 10,000 and that's showing like the um, using a term rider and doing max PUAs uh, and for an AL Mage 45, second best rating. That isn't important, your numbers are gonna differ, but I want you to see the ratio of the total return, the non-guaranteed side with the guaranteed side. And so this particular carrier, I'm not gonna mention any names, but they have the one of the strongest guaranteed uh, policies. So if you could see here, you put $10,000 a year for 10 years, and even if you never got any dividends, even if dividend rates didn't go up, you got $104,000. Not to mention your death benefit has gone up from 214 to 381, as you can see right here. Now, if we look at the non-guaranteed side, we can see it's not that much different. We only get to 108. And in fact, if we look at year five, there's 47,018 bucks here, and there's only $47,539. And if we look at this annual dividend column, you can see that this company, especially in today's dividend rates, isn't paying very robust dividends. In fact, you can see the first few years is $19. So there are certainly other companies that uh, do things a little bit differently. So here's a different one. We can see the guarantees are very comparable here, 104, but instead of 108 total cash value with the current dividends, 
we see 110 and you can see in the annual dividend column how there is more dividends being paid but this chassis too is still very dependent or excuse me it's not very dependent on annual dividends which sounds great from a sales standpoint if somebody says look Almost all of this is guaranteed. Well, that's great in a low interest rate environment like we're in now, but what happens when dividend rates go up? So if large, the total return is largely just based on the guaranteed cash value, well, then you're pretty much guaranteed not to get much of an increase when interest rates go up and dividend rates go up. Um, if you haven't seen it already, I'm just going to digress for a moment. Uh, the video we have here, a historic whole life policy. So you can get there through the link below, but it actually shows this. It shows a policy that was illustrated in a much lower dividend rate environment. Then dividend rates spiked and then they went down and even went down lower to what they were illustrated at. And even still, this policy greatly outperformed because of those spiky years. So you want to have a policy that's dependent on, on dividends. You want to have a nice blend of guaranteed cash value growth, but also current dividends. So we're going to look at some more that, you know, you can see you get to 110 and they don't even have as strong of a guaranteed performance, but at least that means that the dividend will vary. You're more likely to get a better total return here when dividends start to go up, when interest rates go up and dividend rates also go up. Um, here we have 102 to 110. Right, so you can kind of see some different ratios. Here's um, one of our favorite carriers. This just shows the guaranteed, and this is the same 10,000 for the 45 year old after 10 years, 100,000, so only 100,000 in guaranteed, but notice instead of the 108s and the 110, we get to 115. That's because uh, more of the return is coming from dividends. You're getting more bang for your buck for those dividends, and you're still getting a decent guaranteed amount. Uh, again, this company's paid a dividend every year for the last 150 plus years. This company here, uh, they have it collapsed on uh, the same page here. The guaranteed assumptions get all the way to 102, almost to 103. And notice that the total return with dividends are all the way up to 121. So this is a big deal, and this is our one of our favorite carriers right now uh, because they have a very nice blend of a very strong guaranteed chassis, but also very strong dividends, but and also PUAs. So their PUAs give you actually more death benefit for your buck, which as we talked about in guaranteed growth, uh, that raises the bar that the cash value has to meet. So as you stack these PUAs on, uh, as we see here, every year you stack these PUAs on, it's raising the bar for the total guaranteed cash value to grow towards it. So hopefully this helps. Uh, you really should be exploring many different policies, not just looking at one illustration, but looking at several and finding a group that can help you sh do the shopping for you and help you point to these little subtleties, these little idiosyncrasies amongst the different carriers uh, and, and products out there uh, can really help you focus on what you need to get what you're looking for, which is maximum cash value growth and really the best bang for your buck on all fronts. Cash value, death benefit, dividends, PUAs, and so forth. So hopefully this helps. Feel free to reach out and schedule a time with our team and we can go over those these numbers with you using your specific specs and you can see what works best for you. Talk to you soon.